Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be looking at the drug Alprazolam, also known by the brand Xanax. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Alprazolam belongs to the benzodiazepine drug classification, sometimes just called benzos for short. Benzodiazepines work in the central nervous system, which includes the nerves of the brain and spinal cord, to decrease anxiety and produce a calming effect. The way that this is accomplished is by enhancing the effects of the inhibitory neurotransmitter called gamma-aminobutyric acid, more commonly known as GABA. Now, let's break down what all of that means. In our central nervous system, we have neurons that transfer information throughout the entire brain and body. And the way that this information gets from neuron to neuron is through electrical impulses, which we call action potentials. These action potentials are vital in the transfer of information throughout the body. We also have neurotransmitters, which influence these action potentials they can encourage or inhibit action potentials. First, we have excitatory neurotransmitters, which we'll say are these little yellowish red circles you see on the left and right. Just to simplify things, you can think of excitatory neurotransmitters are the ones that are excited, the ones that are promoting or stimulating action potentials. So they are exciting or encouraging whichever neurons that they're acting on. This means that information can travel more easily or more quickly from neuron to neuron. And we also have inhibitory neurotransmitters, which are the opposite. They are kind of like the downers, the ones that slow or prevent action potentials. The neurotransmitter called GABA is actually the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Again, just to simplify things, let's say that GABA are these little green dots. GABA reduces the excitability of neurons, which slows down the transfer of information. So benzodiazepines, like alprazolam, work by enhancing GABA. So alprazolam enhances the main downer of the nervous system which results in all sorts of inhibitory effects throughout the body, including sedation, drowsiness, decreased anxiety, muscle relaxing effects, and more. This is why benzodiazepines are considered central nervous system depressants. Now that we know how alprazolam works, it's a lot easier to work through what it's used for. Alprazolam is often used for the management of anxiety disorder, anxiety associated with depression, and panic disorders. Again, alprazolam decreases anxiety and produces calming effects. Some off-label uses include insomnia, symptomatic relief of severe premenstrual syndrome, alcohol withdrawal syndrome, and more. Many of alprazolam side effects relate to how benzos work, which again is essentially as a CNS depressant. CNS depression may present as sedation, dizziness, weakness, unsteadiness, and more. Severe CNS depression can eventually lead to loss of consciousness, coma, and death. There are many other possible side effects, just some of which include hypotension, possibly due to decreased anxiety, respiratory depression due to CNS depression, suicidal ideations, which are very important to watch for, tachycardia, drug dependence and tolerance, and many more. Avoid use in patients with narrow angle glaucoma, as alprazolam may increase intraocular pressure in rare cases. Alprazolam should not be given to patients during pregnancy or patients who are breastfeeding, as it belongs to the FDA pregnancy category D. Precaution should be used in patients with a history of addiction and patients with suicidal ideations. Also, exercise caution in patients with respiratory disease, like COPD or sleep apnea, due to the risk of respiratory depression. Exercise caution in patients with renal and hepatic impairment, and in elderly patients. In these patients, doses may have to be lowered. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of alprazolam. Especially watch for CNS depression, suicidal ideations, and signs of dependence or tolerance. Be aware that there are many interactions with alprazolam, which may increase or decrease its effectiveness. Other CNS depressants, like opioids and alcohol, may increase the effects of sedation and respiratory depression, which can be life-threatening. Some antifungal medications may also increase sedation and respiratory depression. When a patient first starts on alprazolam, ensure that they have proper support to assist with ambulation and other activities of daily living. This will help with drowsiness and dizziness, and will help reduce the risk of falls, especially in elderly patients. To avoid withdrawal symptoms, do not discontinue alprazolam abruptly, but instead gradually taper the dose according to the provider's instructions. Just some of the potential withdrawal symptoms include anxiety, insomnia, and even seizures. Lastly, for treatment of overdose, a benzodiazepine antagonist, such as flumazenil, may be used as an antidote. 
flumazenil blocks or inhibits GABA receptors, reducing the symptoms of overdose. And that's about it for the basics of alprazolam. If you have any questions or would like me to go over a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.